Hi! Welcome back to Flash Tutorials with Alan Becker. Today we are going to be talking about ba -ba, gradients. So you can see what a gradient is by looking at this. A gradient is a color that gradate, gradiates from one color to another color or through several colors. Um, yeah you cannot actually make gradients on text this is actually using a mask which we will talk about later so the text actually just looks like this but when I use a mask it looks like this anyway um, let me show you some examples of gradients Bing. these are all um, gradients the this one right here is called a linear gradient because it goes in a line and this one is called a radial gradient because it radiates outward from a central point these are the same thing only they use more colors this uses if you look on this side two colors here and then this one uses five colors I mean technically three colors but five different yeah whatever and this one is also using many colors so Let's see. Let me show you how to make a basic gradient. So, um, let me just uh, put a box down on top of a new layer. Boom, boom, boom. And you click on it, or the fill, or whatever. And then you go up to the color section. And then it says solid color. That means there's only one color assigned to this. Right now it's black. Well, we can choose to make it a linear gradient or radial gradient or bitmap. Later we'll talk about that. Okay, so um, usually what you'll see is not this. You will usually see something um, more like this, I think. Um, the default is it'll show you a gradient from black to white and what you can do to edit that is go up here um, it says free transform now but there's also under it hidden very cleverly and un impossible to find if you didn't know is the gradient transform tool so you can use the gradient transform tool to transform gradients um, right here is the central point for this gradient if we move it around you'll see that it moves the gradient in the space. Um, here is the where you can rotate the line of the gradient. As you can see, it is rotating. And this allows you to change the size of your gradient. You can make it even bigger. Now it looks gray, even though it's actually gradiating. I think I made up a new word, and I can't believe I'm still using it. Um, yeah and there are also other controls for the radio gradient I'll switch to a radio gradient right now here we have a circle and the circle is where the entire gradient lies if you go in all the way you'll see that outside of this circle is completely black which is the outermost color so this there are yeah there are three things here you remember the the central point is the same place there's also this sizing feature which allows you to make it wider or skinnier and this allows you to rotate it so if you wanted to make it like that you could make it look like that rotate it halfway and this in the middle is how you size your gradient pretty basic pretty basic um this arrow right here allows you to move the central point in a different spot inside the circle to make for interesting patterns. So you can see there it looks like there's a light shining out from from there. It's kind of cool. Yeah, so you can experiment with that. So um, you can actually take gradients from from one object and place them on another. Let me show you an example. Uh, where is it? Right here. Um, but you got to be careful. 
So, okay. If I take the eyedropper tool and I pick this gradient, see it picked it up for me. And then I can just place it on another ball. Uh uh. Why is it not working? Okay. Here. But if I place it on these, you notice that it looks weird. Why is that? That is because if you look at my paint bucket, there is a lock symbol. That means that this gradient is locked in place. So wherever I fill it, it will align itself to this original gradient. So in this case, we don't want that. See that it's aligned with this, and that's why this one looks, looks right. But these don't. So if I undo, and then do that again, pick that color, but then I go down here, it says lock fill. I uncheck that, or I unclick it. And then I do this, and then look at that. I make individual gradient central points for each one of these circles. So that is a very important thing to note, the lock fill symbol down here. So, yeah. Um, another cool feature is that you can add gradients to lines. Uh, yeah, see? And you can make for interesting, interesting things. It looks kind of like this is um, inside a frame, sort of, because it's like the light's shining from this way. and Yeah. You can use lines like that. Yeah, um, gradients are pretty simple. I think I mean, I'm pretty much almost covered all of it. But, uh, oh yeah, um, another cool thing that you can do with gradients I didn't know about for a while is, um, let me just make this solid black and then resize it, is you can make like glows, like add glows to stuff. See, like, if I open up this uh, mm, symbol, it's, it is a gradient. And, in fact, you can actually add alpha to one of the colors in your gradient so that um, one of the outside will be more transparent than the inside. So that makes for a very soft edge and uh, makes it so that you can make lights that slowly go away like that see and you can use this for like a, I don't know hovering firefly or like a, a shining light in the distance that gets bigger and bigger something like that but it's really cool because it's transparent so wherever you put it it will light up everything around it so yeah just remember you can make transparent colors inside gradients um, yeah, and speaking of which, you can also layer gradients so that you can do things that you couldn't normally do with just the linear or just the radial. For instance, like making a double linear where it's like linear going one way and then also linear going the other way to capture the shadow on two sides of a square. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Yeah, check it out. I have a radial gradient up here, a linear gradient going this way, and a linear gradient going this way. But the only way to achieve this is if they are all on different layers. If I click on this, only the top layer is selected because it is it is blue. Um, you see here it is a radial gradient, but the transparency is so low that you can't really see this color so well if I if I increase it you might be able to tell a little bit more so if I get rid of that you see that there are two left I have my red and my blue and this one is very similar it has a transparent uh, transparent red and a opaque red well almost opaque and it nicely casts over the other gradient which is just a normal one yeah, so that's a good feature. So um, let me show you um, how I used gradients in uh, Animator versus Animation 3. 
um, all of these icons were constructed using lines and gradients. So, um, I don't know where to start. Uh, let's take a look at Firefox. If I go inside Firefox, each one of these uh, pieces has a gradient to it to make it match uh, the icon. If I click on the gradient transform to a witch, by the way, you reach by clicking F. You ver it's very important to remember the F button. It's very important. F. Anyway. Yeah, all of these uh, different pieces have their own little gradient to it. Um, same with this uh, globe in the background. It's a radial gradient, which I think has its center at the top. And um, these two, except they're a slightly different shade. Um, let's see. This the CD for iTunes has two linear gradients each um, with a rainbow pattern as you can see here it has all the different colors you can have as many colors as you want basically and then the line has its own radial value or gradient value yeah and then the iTunes thing has linear or stroke gradients and lots of linear gradients around it. Um, gradients here, you can see that. Um, gradients here, gradients there, gradients everywhere. This one has um, three different radial gradients that all seem to have a very similar central point. If I animate this, you can see that it kind of just rotates between those three gradients. Yeah, this one's kind of complicated. Um, it's got a gradient here to trend to transition between this color and this color. It's kind of tricky. Um, and then there's gradients all along these lines. And uh, this is a radial one that goes like that. And this is a radial one that goes like that. This one is a linear. This one's a linear. Yeah, crazy, crazy. Um, hmm. Yep. Pen has a nice gradient here. Uh, this one's got a nice gradient. I'm just saying this word so many times I'm about to go crazy. Yeah, so I will uh, go over how to make uh, vector images like these using uh, reference images. But uh, until then, experiment with gradients and have fun with that. These gradients are great. <laughs> Alright, I will see you guys later.